recent video has surfaced on the internet and it just showcases how bad things are getting in Hollywood. You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. If it isn't obvious, with all the shitty quality content we've been getting, big studios and big producers are basically casting their writers, directors, and showrunners. They seemingly don't care if you know the source material, or know how to write a script, or even know how to direct a movie. As long as you are diverse enough, you will get the job. Case in point, look at the Marvels. They hired a director with one, I'd say, biggish movie under their belt, and they gave him a multi-million dollar budget movie and the key to a multi-million dollar franchise. And I don't think she was given that job because she's a good director or very well known. I think it was given to her because, you know. Shit! Shit! It's black! I mean, it's clearly not because of her directing abilities. She had no clue what the fuck she was doing. She left the project halfway through post-production to go work on another film. I'm telling you, man, if you just go up to a Hollywood producer and say you're a gay, black, two-spirited, bisexual person looking to write scripts, they would probably give you the job 99% of the time. Anyways, the video that's going viral actually comes from Neurotic's recent video. If you haven't checked it out already, I highly suggest you go and watch it. Basically, it's a big compilation of all these writers and producers and directors of Marvel TV shows, movies, basically saying they were either told not to read the comics or they just don't care about the comics at all. As I was not very steeped in the comics. I didn't, I didn't read any comics or do any research. I wasn't familiar with the comics. I wasn't familiar with the movies. We didn't lean into a whole lot of the history of the comic books. Yeah, candidly, we were not enormous um, comic fans. Huh, this guy. This guy right here. He's the reason Kumal Nanjiani has to go to therapy because of how bad The Eternals was. What? You, you think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. Kumal Nanjiani reveals he needed therapy after bad reviews for Eternal. Those internet trolls put this poor actor into a health decline because they couldn't handle a diverse cast. All those racist bigots hated the film because there was a gay black guy in it. That's totally the reason. And totally not because the movie is boring and slow and adds nothing to the MCU. That therapist is probably making so much money just listening to this million dollar actor talk about how his million dollar film didn't do so well with critics. I think there was some weird soup in the atmosphere for why the movie got slammed so much. And I think not much of it has to do with the actual quality of the movie, he said. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to disagree with that statement because I think the movie actually did suck ass. This is my favorite tweet about this whole thing. Bad reviews hurt his feelings, but the god-awful script didn't. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. The script, the script, you know, the script had gay people. We love gay people. Don't, don't you love the gays? I love the gays. Where am I? I mean, I do feel bad for him, somewhat, because he did transform his whole body just to play this role and the movie absolutely was terrible. But then again, he did get paid for it and Disney did pay him to take a bunch of steroids. But I digress. Let's continue on with the writer's video. I wasn't super into superhero comics when I was a kid. I read a lot of like indie press stuff. Okay, I'm sorry, I have to stop here. The showrunner for She-Hulk wasn't familiar with the comics? <laughs> What a shock. I mean, I think I figured that out once I saw She-Hulk shaking that thing with Megan the Stallion. Cause I don't think that's in the comics. Hold on. Let me just double check here. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't think that's in the comics. First thing I was told is don't read the comics. Really? As a creator, they put you in a bubble. They don't let you talk about any of the other projects, right? You know, they're they're up for anything. We ultimately decided to redefine it for the series and thought that it worked uh, better for the story that we're trying to tell. Ah, yes, and of course you have the two of the hundreds of writers of Echo appear in this video. You know, the most diverse cast of writers of Native Americans and deaf people who couldn't write a decent story to save their lives and completely changed the character's abilities for the sake 
of making her a more strong female character. Did you ever read the? Did you? Did you, you you've no. never read the comic book. When the DVD comes out, I'm going to read a Thor comic book and just see where we went wrong. Now, Taika Waititi is an interesting case because he did make one good film without knowing anything about the comics. But that's as far as it got. Listen, Ragnarok is probably one of the best movies in the MCU, but Thor: Love and Thunder, uh, not the greatest. Anyways, that video perfectly shows big parts of the problem with Marvel, and you can make the argument a big part of the problem with Hollywood. None of these writers seem to take the time to look at the source material and really understand what makes these characters great. And sometimes the studios tell these writers not even to do any research. And that hurts the project tremendously. And it seems to be happening in other movie franchises other than just Marvel. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny had an old man Indy who was sad, lonely, and a loser get propped up and put to shame with these girl bosses in a classic Mary Sue kind of way. Or how about Star Wars, where they completely had the opportunity to have the original characters back on screen together, but instead they went with a forces female character and a wasted potential stormtrooper arc. I guess now speaking out loud, it's mainly just a problem with Disney. They're basically ruining every single big franchise they have by casting writers and casting directors for the sake of the woke cult. No, you said woke cult. I don't give a shit. That's what it is. It all makes sense now because Disney had one of the worst years in the box office in a long time. And now that I'm thinking about it, it's probably because all their writers, directors, and producers were just picked solely based on the way they look, not because of their ability to write a decent script. And on top of that, they told most of them to don't worry about the source material. No one cares about those. Yeah, there's people who care about them. It's called your fan base. I'm not saying this is the only reason Disney is failing and movies suck now, but it's definitely a huge part in my opinion. And it's no wonder Disney is bombing hard. I really hope Elon comes through and saves us once again and buys Disney. I'm just, uh, just here with friends, you know, thinking about companies to acquire. What? But of course, I wanna hear from you guys, so leave your comments down in the comment section below. Also be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed what you've seen here today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.